Do you know someone that often tries to hide their anger or frustration but instead ends up taking their negative emotions out indirectly in very upsetting ways? If so, you might be dealing with someone who is passive aggressive. Today we're going to talk all about what exactly that means, why it happens, how to spot it, and most importantly, how to handle passive aggressive people. Stick around. Welcome back. My name's Nina and I'm a life coach that specializes in personal development. Here at this channel, we talk all about our emotional well-being, understanding our own psychology and leading our best life possible. So if you aren't already a subscriber, please take a moment and become one. We definitely want you to stay connected. It's very easy to spot someone that is openly aggressive. They are very clear about how they are feeling. And although it might be extremely unpleasant to deal with them, there's a very obvious explanation for why we are feeling upset after interacting with them. Unfortunately, this is not the case when we are dealing with someone who is passive aggressive. So they are going to actually act in a way that is not at all sincere. And I kind of think of it as a sugar-coated hostility. So we may just get this kind of weird feeling from a family member or a coworker or a friend, but not exactly be able to pinpoint why we are feeling uncomfortable. We feel like they're kind of off in some way because what they're saying isn't really the same as how they are acting. So for example, they may be enthusiastically agreeing with you in the workplace, but yet they miss their deadline or you hear that they've been talking behind your back in the office or something like that. So how they are portraying themselves to be is greatly dissimilar to how they are actually feeling. Passive aggressive behavior can be exhausting and disheartening and it can actually waste a lot of time because nothing actually ever gets resolved. It can also really harm relationships because there is a lot of dishonesty that is actually taking place and it can cause small problems to escalate. This dysfunctional behavior, however, is unfortunately incredibly common. There are many ways that passive aggressiveness can be expressed. It could be by emotional withdrawal, procrastination, sulking, talking behind someone's back, secretly seeking revenge, giving the silent treatment, giving backhanded compliments, acting sullen or grumpy, not completing tasks, or using indirect communication. And it is an extremely immature form of emotional expression. The term passive aggressive basically just refers to a pattern of indirectly expressing negative emotions instead of openly addressing them. So we have to ask ourselves, why would someone choose to behave this way? Why would they not just tell us how they were feeling? It makes a lot more sense to do so and it would be a lot more productive. Well, there's actually a lot of reasons why people would choose to act this way. And most of the time, it's not something that they actually consciously choose. Now, the first reason is because it's a lot easier for many people to be passive aggressive than to be assertive. And we are often taught as children that it's not appropriate to do so. So it's a skill that we never really learn in a lot of cases. And a lot of personality types also greatly struggle with being assertive because there is often a guilt associated with it. The second thing is that anger is not always socially acceptable. Again, we are taught as children to only display positive emotions. So we end up feeling bad about our negative feelings. We want approval. So we learn to hide the negative emotions that we think are going to be frowned upon. The third thing is that passive aggressiveness is socially acceptable so we get great at disguising our feelings and only really expressing these negative feelings covertly. Now the fourth reason unfortunately is that it becomes an effective method to be able to harm someone else indirectly. Sadly some people use this behavior to get back at someone or to punish them because they can get away with it. Because there is no direct confrontation, it's hard to kind of catch them in the act. 
The fifth reason is because it can make that person feel powerful because they are able to control or manipulate another person's emotions or even their behavior. They're denying their own anger but trying to sabotage someone else. When this is successful, it gives them a sense of satisfaction because they feel like the other person is really getting what they deserve. And the sixth reason is probably the most common and that is simply that they feel that the other person is just too scary or too intimidating for some reason and they would never be able to be sincere about how they were feeling so they choose passive aggression. And in other cases, it's simply a case of jealousy. So in a way, they simply feel less than the other person, which would be a very painful thing to even admit to their own selves. So a lot of times this behavior kind of leaks out without them even realizing it themselves. So how can we deal with this behavior? Well, as always, we really only have two options. We can choose to confront it or we can choose to ignore it. There is really no magic solution here. One of the things that we have to realize is that no, we are not crazy. This is a real phenomenon and if you've been sensing it, it is likely the case. So first you have to really validate your own feelings and then you have to decide whether or not you feel that it is appropriate and worthwhile to confront it. And if not, it's better to just ignore it and just understand that this isn't an acceptable form of communication or behavior, but hopefully you have kind of a better understanding of why it is most likely occurring. Now, if this is someone you can actually avoid, if it is a toxic person that you can just kind of really never see anymore, that is an option that might be available to you, but always that is going to depend on whether or not that is actually feasible. But when it's someone that you actually really love and care about, it is oftentimes very worthwhile to confront the situation because you want to repair the relationship. You want to have a relationship that is open, honest, and real. But you want to be careful with how you approach the situation. And I actually did a video recently called How to Have Difficult conversations and I will go ahead and link that down below because I think that is a very valuable resource when you are choosing to go about confronting people with sensitive issues that might make them feel offended or embarrassed because of their behavior. So I will definitely refer you to that video, but basically we want to make sure that we are not using statements that are accusatory because that's really going to shut down the conversation before really anything effective takes place. So we want to try to use statements that start with I feel. So we're not saying you did this, you did that. You're saying that you feel this way and then giving them a chance to openly respond to that as possible. But it's never an easy situation. It is not a magic wand. So hopefully that video will help you on that end. But hopefully today you learned a little bit about why passive aggressive behavior occurs hers and really how to spot it. So I truly hope today's video is helpful to you and if it was, please like it and share it with someone else who may need to hear the same message today. Also again, if you aren't already a subscriber, please take a moment and become one. We definitely want you to stay connected and I thank you so much for spending time with me today. Have an absolutely extraordinary day.